B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. Typhex Horic Asia 2024 featured talks and presentations from a number of experts in Southeast Asia's hospitality industry. B2B Cambodia had a chance to speak with three experts from Hotstats, Colliers International and HSMAI to discuss key ongoing trends and the future of the hospitality industry. There's been on investment in the hospitality sector for a, a long time. It's been dominated by independent small owners. Uh, and the quality that you have is not necessarily of international standard. So we're seeing a shift towards that. And I give the uh, example of Rosewood when it went into Phnom Penh, how that's transformed the luxury landscape. You know, ro uh, Raffles and um, the, the Sofitel used to get about $200 US average room rate. But since Rosewood opened with four or $500, it's been able to pull the whole market up. But it's also been able to pull the whole experience of Phnom Penh in terms of not only what the locals are asking for, because suddenly we've seen what they can achieve with a good brand, but also what foreigners will, 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 will want to, to attain. So we see more and more um, trends. And you know, we talked about these new generations uh, where it's not only about going to three-star hotels or four-star hotels or luxury hotels, but it's about lifestyle, right? This boutique, this lifestyle, and especially in, in Asia, lifestyle is a lot about eating, right? So when we talk about traveling and, you know, taking the pictures of the, the food before we even eat that, so every food has become lifestyle, right? So that's definitely an impact. Now, the other trend would be um, in a restaurant, right? So you have different kind of outlets. You have the catering part as well. So depending on your hotels, um, it's important to know how to yield this segmentation. One of the biggest trends we've seen in, in Southeast Asia is that a lot of revenues come from restaurants and bars. Right? Catering is always there, but then restaurants and bars are linked to what I said earlier in terms of lifestyle. Right? So that's coming up a lot, where people want to go and spend uh, I have nice pictures of the food, of the ambience. So yeah, definitely bars and restaurants are the, are the, the big opportunities here to, to optimize. Well, the definition of hospitality is it's, it's at the forefront of those trends, right? It's a trend center. But at the same time, people go for a different experience. So you have to balance the, the modern with the old. Uh, it goes back, you know, I go to Angkor Wat Sith temples, but also uh, there's a lot of nature in Cambodia. So it's broadening that experience and educating people to say there's more to Cambodia. And that to me is where you can increase the dwell time. I think the nice thing about the nice thing about Cambodia is it's got, it's already got such great, it's a fantastic place, right? It's beautiful, the people are nice, it's friendly, they've got all the right ingredients. Um, so I think for, pe for properties and businesses in Cambodia, it's about targeting the right people to come. So, you know, who are they looking for? Don't try not to spend your marketing funds, like just don't just blanket them out there. Think about targeting the customers and the, and the countries that you want them to come from. So don't say, okay, I'm going to do a lot of advertising in Singapore because they all want to come. Think about, okay, so who do you want in Singapore? What guests do you want? I think that um, technology is really key. There's two things really. It's training and technology. Um, technology can help you reach your customers and get people, get the right guests into your resort or your restaurant. Um, if you don't have technology and the right tools, you won't be able to keep up. And then training is sort of the same thing. You've got to make sure people know how to use the tools and know what the processes are to be able to improve their, their customer acquisition and then their profitability once people are, are in the resorts. I think it depends on the location as well. And um, for sure, the big data would be more utilized by bigger companies, but I don't think that the smaller companies cannot use it. Right, so uh, we're talking about benchmarking a lot when, to come, when it comes to data. It doesn't mean compete with everyone or compete with the bigger guys because maybe that's not your uh, objective, right? But it's to use data in the market as a benchmark to improve yourself, right? And especially if it's the, the same market where you have a lot of big players, so it's good to see the, the best practice, to see different examples of what's working and to see other opportunities as well. So in terms of cost saving, where bigger companies would struggle more, so that's the opportunities for smaller restaurants to, to, to save more costs maybe, right? And then the loyalty, you know, the authenticity of, 
of the food, the connections, um, the relationship with the client using customer feedback is probably one of the things that smaller restaurants can do, can have more time to do, if I may say. Yeah, I think there's a bit of change in that the business travellers are getting a little bit back to their old routines of travelling a lot for single things, whereas 2023 saw businesses travel a few times and trying to cram lots of things into the one trip to make it less expensive. We're just seeing that start to change now in the US definitely um, and in some of the Western markets. So that's kind of a good thing for hospitality and for airlines, right? And I guess tour operators. Asia Pacific in general has a great potential to expand, right? It's, it's still maturing, uh, you know, GDP per capita, is very is increasing from a very low base. So if you, if you look at the China model, for example, in the ten, last ten or twelve years, what they've done to tourism, right? We have India that's going to be doing that. It's about 10, 12 years behind. Indonesia is going to be doing that in terms of the huge population, and even within the Mekong region itself, you know, you have you got a growing young middle class that's coming up because they have better access to education and better jobs. So they're going to want to spend as well and and go on the. Instagrammable moments, right? So I, I think there's still a lot of opportunity in terms of growth for the region. You've been with B2B Cambodia. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we continue to bring you more news, updates, and developments from the business community in the Kingdom of Cambodia.